Well, today is a big day. We are taking Nicole's uh, Can-Am Riker. It's a 2020 model and uh, we are going to turn this one into more of a bagger style. Right now she just has the rear fender so it's more like a sportster looking. Uh, she has done a little bit of modifications to it. You can see here she has the, the comfort seat that we installed here a few weeks ago. And uh, she's also done some modifications here to the front where she put these uh, special fairings on uh, in pink with, with leaves on. But today we are going to first install the max mount here. And then afterwards we have uh, from sling mods, we have a kit with three different uh, saddlebags. There's one on each side and then a top saddlebag as well so that she can bring jackets and other stuff when we are uh, on tour. So we have all these boxes here with the different stuff in. The first one here, that's the one with the max mount, as it's called, that goes over the rear fender. This here is the bracket that goes on top of the max mount for the saddlebags. And then we have, I suppose this is the big saddlebag for the top and then the two smaller saddlebags for, for the side. So uh, let's try to open it up and see what's in there. Uh, to be careful not to cut through. So let's see this first one here, what that is. Oh, that seems to be the top one. That is the top saddlebag for the rear. And then let's see, then the other one here must have the two smaller ones for the side. So we'll go and take a look at that. Yeah, so these are the two side saddlebags. You can see them here, the left and right. And then of course the last one here should be the brackets and everything we need for it. Let's see if that's enough to open it. are the different mounts here that we need to install. Yeah, here they are. So that box goes on the side for the two side saddlebags. And then this here should be the mount for the top. Cut this tape here. Very well packaged to protect it. Yeah. So here we have the mount for the top where the top saddlebag locks into, and that mounts over the max mount goes and going over the fender. And together with all these brackets here which are very nice well packaged and looks like a good quality there's a hole back here with zip ties and all the bolts and knots and screws you need for it and uh, some manual for how to do the installation and here in the last box should be the what's called the max mount uh, that what that's a can am BRP product, but that's what needs to go over the 
rear fender. We have all the screws and bolts here. That away. And here we have the max mount itself. And that's the first thing you will be installing. It's all aluminum, very solid. Look how nice it's machined and looks like really, really quality products. Very pleased to see that. It's very nice. So this here is the first one we, we are going to install. It's now about 10 o'clock, so I'll try to put some time to the install. We've never done this before and we start all the way from the max mount to all the brackets for the saddlebags. Yeah, we are doing the install out in the campground in Roswell, where we are staying at. And I found a nice little place here where there's some shade from the neighbor's trailer. So I think I will just do the install here. Right here is where we need to install the max mount bracket. So we need these fairings off. There has been one here, but we already lost it while driving out at White Sands. The roads were so bumpy, so it simply came off. But I think these here, you can simply just grab them and pull them off. They should be easy to remove. They just sit with these small clips there up in some screws sitting under the seat, like these here. So they're very easy to take off. Now we're ready for them. And like this here, it should just slide right in. And it does. And it fits like a champ. So now we just need the screws in. And the kit came with these four screws. It has some glue on here as well. And uh, I'll just use my little socket kit here because we need some, um, so some uh, torque screws that fits there. What does it say? 8.8? .8. I think it's a T40 fitting. Yep, it's the T40 screw. So we'll grab that one and then we will simply screw them in. Put a little extender on. And then we should be able to put them in here. And remember, this is all aluminum, so use hand tools. I've seen some people who use power tools for this. I wouldn't recommend it. You can easily damage the threads because it's only aluminum. Use some hand tools that are not too powerful and then tighten it by hand. I can't believe the quality of these products. These BRP products here, they are phenomenal. Like a piece of machined aluminum like this, it just fits. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to mount. And I have to say the sling mod product, the bags, from what I just saw unwrapping it, I have to say the quality seems to be just as good as the BRP products. It's really nice stuff. Easy as that, we now have this max mount installed and here is where we now need to install the bracket for the saddlebag sitting over here. But first we need the electrical wiring harness and to do that we need the lights off here. We need this piece off for the license plate lights. So all this needs to be unscrewed and I think the screws are sitting here behind. Yeah, there's one there. And there should be one underneath sitting there and then some inside here as well when we get this piece off so we'll start doing that and these screws here they use a t20 
torque as well. So we'll put that in, see if we can get these out. Seems to go fairly easy. And now when we start getting screws and stuff, I take a plastic tote like this just to keep it all in one place so I don't lose it. And here on the underside, we have the second screw. And they come off very easy. And then we should be able to remove this part here soon. Oh, it might be underneath there. So there might be another screw we need to loosen. Yeah. Underneath here we have another screw setting. There. And that's a different torque size. That's not smart. And that one turned out to be a T25. Oh, but with the right big bit size it comes out easily so let's see if we can get this here off now I think it just opens here from the top carefully yep there it comes and that reveals two other screws, one here and one here, for the side lights. So we need those off as well. And these here, they're also T30. So we simply need to get to the back side of the the tail lights here because we need to hook into the wiring harness for all the lights on the saddlebags. That's one of the nice things about this saddlebag kit here from Sling Mods. It has the three saddlebags but it also has stop lights and signal lights and everything so it makes you very visible when you're out riding. So I really like this kit. It's a super nice kit they've made. And it's fairly easy, it comes with everything prepared, so you have a full wiring harness to mount here on the back side. So one of the things I really like about it is you get a full wiring harness here and you don't have to do any modification or soldering or anything. This simply is ready to hook up, so you have all these different parts here. And you simply just hook it all up to the to the tail lights. Just sort it out a bit here so we know what is what. Uh, two long ones for the side. We can now start mounting the different parts of the wiring kit. So first we take out this plug here on the rear. And this you can see the original has the right label there. We have a cable here with a red or with red, sorry, red around. So we take this that splits into two and we mount it in here. Then this one end here needs to connect into one of these two. Let's see which one fits. I would guess it's into this one. Yeah, it snaps right in there. And then the other end has to go over to the other side. And we'll simply repeat this process over here at the other side. We have a similar plug here. There's a little clip there you push in and then you can pull it out. And then we take, that has to be this one, I guess. Fit it in here. And then the other end fits into this plug. So now both of these are hooked up with one loose cable. And each of the long cables, there are two of them, they have two plugs at the end and there are these short ones here 
and they go into a plug that fits into the ones here at the tail light. So the opposite end needs to connect to the long cable here. Let's see where it fits. Guess it's here. Yep, clicks right in. And then this one should be able to mount to the opposite side here, I would guess. Yeah, and that fits. So now we have the Y split there, and we have the cables that have to be routed up under to the trunk. They're ready. We'll do the same in the other side. Yeah, I have to give it to them, these people here from Sling Mods. They have really made this easy. Because you look here, it all, all just snaps together. No soldering, no nothing, no modifications. Can't be any easier. Then we have the other end of the long cable. We have these two here that split out into two. And they will have to, with the one end here, click into see yeah see like that and the same on the other side and now with both harnesses here put together I have two wires that are left over these half long half long ones but don't worry they are being used uh, when we have pulled the wire harness up onto the max mount these are the ones connecting up to the saddlebags so it's all good and uh, by the way, if you wonder about how do I know how to put this together, uh, the whole thing here comes with very detailed instructions where you can see how it all clicks into each other. Um, so you have all your parts here and you have a step-by-step -step guidance for how to click them together. So very easy, anyone should be able to do it. And now it's time to route these wires here um, so we get them up underneath here. I think I will choose to go on this side here, on the left side of the bike. Here we have the whole transmission and the gearbox. And uh, on the other side, we have the exhaust pipe. And I don't want to get anywhere near that, that gets hot. So uh, my preference is to go over here and we will try to unscrew this cover here and see if we can route the wires in together with the existing wire harness and then perhaps run it underneath the transmission and up to here. And to get this off here I noticed there's only one screw it seems. See this here is not hold, held by these so I think it's only that one screw here. So let's just try to, that was easy, it was already kind of loose, so let me just unscrew that and see if the whole cover comes off. And then we can make a very nice and clean install because what I hope for is we can route all the wiring in here so that it's not hanging, visible, it'll be looking nice. Oh yeah, let's see, here it comes. That's nice. So we can basically take our wire harness and route it here and then put it on with some zip ties so it's nice and, nice and tidy. Now it's time to see how can we route this cable. See, I plan on seeing if I can zip tie it onto here, route it down, and if you see in under here, under the transmission, we have the brake hoses and other wires running. So I'll zip tie it up with those, come up here and go up. So to make sure we get the right length over there, I would like to just see if I can get all this here tucked in nicely. See if we can route the cables over here. Get everything in the back there. Nice and tidy. That looks good. screw in and for the 
tail lights. And that was T30s holding these in place. And I think I will do that the same in the other side so we have the tail lights on. Don't over tighten, this is plastic, so you don't want it to break anything. And the tail lights here need to come back up. So just route this nicely here and see if we can get this part back on. And it just snaps on. And then now I made a mistake. I should have had this one on first because that screw sits in there. So I'll take that off again. And meanwhile we are doing this. <laughs> Nicole is grooming the dogs. Oh, there's somebody who likes it there. <laughs> Miss Ellie is getting washed. <laughs> oh, She's getting she likes a it. Waterless shampoo. A waterless shampoo. For Ellie. That's something new she's trying. So with that off again, now we try to make the other side in here. See if we can get that mounted nice. It goes the other way here. See if we can get that to sit as it's supposed to. It sits right there. Should work easy. It just sits here with one screw from here. And that is again a T30. I have to give kudos to these people who have developed this kit here because this is nice. I love the way it's so simple and when you push this one here back it just has these two that pushes into these two holes so uh, and then one screw from underneath so we need to kind of take it in from the lower side get it up until it fits the holes of these two and then push them down and then it's just one t30 screw underneath As an engineer, I can't help really liking when stuff is designed right. You know, this is this is awesome. I just have to say it. Can't be made much easier than this. It's really to a level I would say anyone can install this. Don't be afraid of that. So both tail lights on and the license plate light. Now it's time to route the cables down to the side. And now it's time to take this plate here and mount that up, up underneath the max mount. There are, as you see, four screw holes that it needs to be bolted into. And these should fit into this one, this one, this one, and this one. So uh, we just need to get the right bolt for it. And it's a good idea to use a little Loctite, some blue Loctite, just to make it sit snug and not come off and here we have all the bolts and nuts so just put it in a plastic top not to use anything and we really need to remember to mount these here as well up underneath that's to route the cables through so uh, that's important two of the so in the kit there are four 10 millimeter bolts here and uh, 
that means we might as well prepare a 10 millimeter socket that fits for them that's what we need to tighten it and we will give them a little bit of the blue thread lock here so uh, that's just to make sure they stay in place so we'll do that to each of the screws just give them a, a little drop here Might as well prepare all four of them. And it's just a tiny little drop you need. And there you go. So that's just called thread lock. So I think I'll just start with one of those here in the rear. Just to hold it up in place. And find these holes there. If we can get to it. There it is. And if you can get somebody to help you hold. The brackets here is ideal, but you can't you can do it yourself. I'm doing it myself here, yeah. and it works. And there is one similar on the other side. And before mounting the last two ones of them, we have to we have to have these uh, cable brackets on. So we need those to bend over and let me see they might be able to bend a little bit more together than they're easier to mount. And as you have the spring load from this here, I found it easiest if you just uh, use the extension from your socket and kind of find where it goes because you can see you have to come over that spring load there. So that turns out to be the easiest. Just find where they go in. When you're there, then start screwing it in. And we're getting it here. So that's good. Sitting right there. And we can use a wrench to make it a little tighter. All the way in yet, we still want the flexibility from the other side. So we go. And we do the same here on the other side. And it helps a lot to have this on. I think this is one of the parts that I can see people find most difficult, but I can warmly recommend just using the extension from your sockets. That makes it really, and now we can tighten the others as well. That really helps tremendously. And with all four bolts mounted, it looks like this, and you have for the cable there in the rear, and the same here on the other side, four bolts holding it, and there's the cable. Cable tie. Well, I was just getting a bit concerned. I couldn't find these brackets here that mounts here, here up onto the side here. Uh, for the side bags, but uh, I'll show you where they are. They were not in the box with the brackets. So before you start calling sling mods, check in these here, in the side bags. Uh, that's where they are. They have put them inside here. So uh, take the key here, unlock it. And we should be able to open. Make sure to keep the keys out of this. You don't want them to be. But here they are, they are lying here. And here we have four holes on each side. So we need four of these for each side. And uh, there's a bag of washers and there's a bag of nuts for it as well. So we'll mount that now. And see here we need to go down from the top and uh, we'll make that fit up here. Hold it 
it here. And then on the lower side, you need a washer on first. And you need a knot. And it goes on fairly easy. And you can just stand, start by hand tightening everything so you have it in place. Do that for all four. We have a washer and we have a knot. Impressive how everything just fits together so well here. Yeah, it's really a nice kit. And then the last hole here, it's the one furthest back and out. When you go through there, then on the underside you need one of these cable holders to route the cable through out to the thing. I found it was a good idea to squeeze it a bit before. So let's see if we can get that pull through, that went smooth. That's a bit tricky to hold everything in place. I think I will tighten the other screws up a bit so that it's not loose. And just for your information, the upper side here, these are 10 millimeter heads and on the lower side it's 11. Uh, so But I found it easiest here just to use two socket wrenches and you can easily tighten those up. Almost takes nothing. And with these four in place here, now it should be easier to get the last one in. So here we really need to get up and have this one yeah. might have to go like this and it sit like that no, I guess it might have to to sit this way out that's kind of the only way it can sit put the wash on Kind of where you wish you had more than two hands because uh, it's a bit tight here. But it's doable. Here it comes. And we are good. Ah, oh, we can turn it. We can turn it like that. Just sit a little crooked. That's fine. You'll never see that. This is great. And then the same in the other side for the other bracket. Now we simply repeat the process here. I think Ellie, she decided that that drinking bowl has to die now. She is doing everything she can to destroy that one. She's throwing it around at the dog kennel. And then the cables here that we routed under, underneath here and all the way up. Uh, I decided to put them through these two holes there. And then I'll take them up and I'll sit, tip tie them here because then here, that's where you plug the saddlebags onto. I can, I can zip tie them so they're sitting underneath here. So I think we just take a zip tie around here, and then we put these underneath here. Don't look nice. And then just leave them like that. The end here. 
same in the other side. And now we have these here that go on each side and uh, this is kind of where the saddlebag will hang on. So I think they need to sit, I guess with these up and this down. So you kind of set it in there and then click it over. I'll just check, double check that so we get, so it's not like that. So let me just double check on that. And it was good I did, because they do need to sit with this one on top and these in the bottom. I just looked at the saddlebag itself, so we'll mount these here. We will put that here. Put a washer on the back side and the knot. And just finger tighten it here. We can tighten them up later. Take one more bolt from here. Washer on the back side and a knot. And again, these are self locking. So we need four of those in total. And there will be one here. A washer. And a knot for that one. And the last one. This here is of course exactly the same on the other side. So we now have both the uh, brackets on the sides mounted. And it's now time to grab these nice saddlebags. Look how nice they are. Even comes with a rear seat cushion here if you have a back seat passenger. So let's see if we can get that on. Oh, it clicks. So now it's on. And the side back should snap in the same way. We have the two points that fits there and this on top. So it kind of just sits down over these two knots and then it clicks in. Snap, here you go. And this should just sit over here and snap right in. And here you go. We now have all the wires from the saddlebag sitting here. They are nicely coiled up. I'll have to cut these zip ties. And also here from the side bags, same in the other side. And then I have these two extenders. And then with that, we need to come up and meet these plugs we have over here. So we need to connect to those. So that should be a piece of cake. And then afterwards, it's only about coiling up the cables and get it sitting nice in here with zip ties so you don't have a messy look. So we are almost done. And see for the wires here for the side bags, that's where you need to use these small extenders because they can't reach. You can see the cable here from the front. They can't reach that barely. So uh, here you use these small extenders. Let's see, put that in, and then we will simply perhaps just route it through some of these holes here. Ooh. This way. Okay, and we will coil all that one, all that up, and at the end it should all be almost not visible and here we have the cable from the front that we plug up to what did I do here oh yeah this one goes here huh? so to make sure I turn it right here yeah. this way it goes and then we have this. To make this last one reach here, I just have to cut the zip tie that is around it here. Kind of not much space here. Plus. And then we will connect that here. 
and it clicks right in. Now all that. So we try to take this here and coil it up and get it in there. Might have to use two zip ties just to get it nice and out of the way. Here we have it. It's all set. That's the one side. And I'll give it one more zip tie from the other end. You might want to be aware that if you want to be able to take the saddle back off, so you need to make the clocks accessible, but uh, I don't foresee we will ever do that. If we do, I can change this zip tying a bit here. And with that, the install is basically complete. We have these nice saddlebags mounted and uh, I can't see one thing. I think a little passenger seat here would be in its place. And I think we'll buy that because you already have the backrest and she got the nice comfort seat here. That would just complete this whole thing. So it almost needs the, the back seat as well. So we'll buy that. But look how nice it is. These are super nice quality saddlebags. This is sturdy and it's good. It has tail lights and everything. So now it's time to test it. So I'll Thank go and get the keys. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I got the dogs grooming. Yeah. So we'll now get the keys, try to start it and see if the lights work here. Okay. We have the old tail light, but we also have these here blinking. And we have down here. And let's try the other side. Same thing. All works. It's hard to see here in the sun. And these here are blinking. Now everything works. Now we just need to test the brakes. And I'll try to turn this off. And then we need to push the brake light. Yeah, and I can see here that works too. Yep, all is good. Everything works as it's supposed to. So we're done. Time wise, it's now one o'clock. We started at 11, and I will say I have not been busy. Uh, I don't admit this myself, and uh, was doing a lot of other stuff helping with the dogs and in between so yeah 10 o'clock I started at 10 sorry yeah so from, from 10 to 1 but that was doing a lot of other stuff in between <laughs> so three hours that's definitely plenty of time for this project it can be done in two I would guess so a pretty straightforward install and everything works and one thing that is worth noticing is there are two sets of keys this set here is for the top back and then this set here is for the side back so it's not the same keys but when you pop the trunk here just try to look how nice this is you can only love this can't you If you like this transformation of my wife's Can-Am Riker from a sportster to being a bagger, please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button so that you can see more videos here from Six Wheels Down. Thank you for watching.